Okay, well, hi, everybody, and thank you all for joining us this evening. My name is Amy, and I'm the museum coordinator at the North Lanark Regional Museum, and we're happy to have the opportunity to bring to you a digital speaker series in 2021, and thank you all for your continued support of the North Lanark Historical Society. In light of current public health guidelines and restrictions, and the provincial stay-at-home order, the museum is currently closed to the public. However, visitors to our website can find our two virtual exhibits, the Mills of Appleton and the Almont train wreck. And you can also see fascinating highlights of our collections by following us on Facebook and Instagram. For more information, you can visit our website at www.northlanarkregionalmuseum.com. While this event has no ticket cost, we do encourage you to make a donation to the Historical Society. In making a donation, you're helping to ensure that we can continue to provide these events and help bring local history to life. I will be putting the link to our official donation page in the chat box of this meeting. We ask that you please mute your microphones now to limit any background noise. You're welcome to leave your cameras on, but are by no means required to do so. This presentation will be recorded video will be used for promotional and educational purposes by the Historical Society. We will also be running tonight's presentation a little bit differently, so if you experience any audio or video issues, please let me know in the chat. There will be opportunities for questions at the end of the presentation, and the chat will be monitored so you can post any questions that you have there. And I will open the floor up to questions at the end, and if, if you are interested in asking your questions to our speaker directly. Now, I'm happy to introduce our speaker, former business owner, Brian Bean, and his presentation, the Memories of the Packenham General Store. Brian worked for several years at the Packenham General Store and will be sharing his memories from his time there. We are very happy that Brian has taken the time to prepare this presentation for us, and we hope that you enjoy the stories that he has to tell. So it is my pleasure to share Brian Bean's Memories of the Packenham General Store. Thank you for asking us to tell you about our experience with the Packenham General Store. It is almost 19 years since we left the store, but it seems like yesterday. First of all, I'm going to start with an aerial view of Packenham. We thought we would start with a little refresher about Packenham and its beginnings. Packenham Township was surveyed in 1822, prior to European settlement it was used by the Algonquins for hunting, fishing, gathering. The waterways and the number of beaver dams provided an ideal situation for the fur trade. In 1823, Robert Harvey and John Powell erected a mill and pot ash works at the site of the Packenham Bridge, known as Little Falls, and later as Harvey Falls. At first, the mill was used to square timber, and later the mill was used for grinding grain. This slide shows a picture of the bridge looking east towards Kenburn. According to Vera McGiffin, a Packenham historian, there was also a log cabin built by a Mr. Hume, in which he kept a small stock of goods and kept a little store, the first general store in Packenham. This photo shows the main street with the horse and buggy. This photo indicates just how many stores were located on the main street of town. The one with a large awning is a surviving general store. The next few slides show some scenes of important structures that made up the village of Packenham. A public school, churches, Main Street again looking north, CPR train station. 
This photo reveals the view of the store from St. Peter's Celestine Church Tower. This is truly a bird's eye view. The period between 1823 and 1840, when the Pakenham General Store was built, saw a settlement of the area by the Irish, English, and Scottish settlers, with the population of the township growing to 1,142 people. There were five general stores in Pakenham supplying the surrounding area. The only continuously operated general store that has survived is the Pakenham General Store. The stone structure was built by Robert Brown and Archibald MacArthur in 1840, and it opened that year. They ran the store until 1849. Robert Brown owned the store independently until 1876, when he took on a partner, David M. Scott. This partnership lasted three years, after which the store was sold to Robert Scott, a brother of David, and William Halliday. If looked closely in this picture, and I apologize for the quality, you will see the Scott and Halliday sign in front of the window is the one-legged tailor. We actually kept this crutch at the general store for many years. From 1888 to 1905, Robert Scott and his son Albert ran the store. The Scott brothers, Albert, William, and G. Harold Scott, who were all sons of Robert, continued the legacy. During the period of 1927 to 1947, William and G. Harold took over the running of the store. Albert is reported to have gone to California. Robert A. Scott, who was the son of William, joined his father and uncle as a partner. In 1964, when he assumed full ownership, Robert A. or Bob, as we knew him, and his wife Mary, sold a store to John and Yvonne Hayes in 1981. John and Yvonne changed the name from Scott's General Store to the Pakenham General Store. And we purchased the store in 1987. Ah, 1987, a good year for the Bean family. We were living in Kingston at the time and passed through Pakenham on our way to the cottage. We saw the for sale sign and met with the Hayes shortly after to make, a, make the purchase. You might say that being a merchant was in my blood as my father was employed to run central warehousing for the Air Force. My grandfather was also a merchant as well as my great grandfather. This entrepreneurial spirit seems to have passed to my son, as he now owns Bean Chevrolet in Carlton Place. We sold the store after 15 years of fun to Rodney Bell in 2002. He has passed the store on to new owners just this year to Wanda Rump and Brian Clark. This is a picture of us with Mary and Bob Scott. Mary is still alive at 100 years of age. Also pictured are John and Yvonne Hayes, so three sets of owners. Hayes designated a plaque with the names of the previous owners, and we added ours. The plaque proudly displays the names of those who came before us on the front wall of the building. In honor of the store's 150th birthday in 1990, the plaque was commemorated by Paul Dick, our member of parliament at the time, in a ceremony with Wayne Rossa and Dr. Keon. We, of course, had a party to celebrate. We gave tours of the building. We had a petting zoo, local entertainment, lots of sandwiches and cold drinks. 
People gave donations and all the proceeds from our 50 cent ice cream cones served by local celebrities went to the Hart Institute in Ottawa. At the request of the LAC Act, the store was designated a heritage building in 1989 by the Pakenham Township Council. At, at the end of August, we closed the store for a weekend of inventory and reopened the store on September the 1st. The Hayes stuck with us for a few weeks to teach us the ropes, and then we were on our own. Well, we took on quite a building. The store itself had three stories with a full basement. When looking at the front of the building, the store with its three floors on is on the right and the 3,000 square foot house is on the left with three stories as well. The main floor of the store was jam packed with hardware, groceries, clothing and antiques. The Hayes had added to the collection of antiques through their years of ownership. The stone cellar of the store with its giant beams was high and dry. It was a neat box slide where goods were easily sent downstairs without having to carry them. Inside in the backyard, there were three structures. The main outbuilding had two areas on the main floor. There were tin line bins for grain storage and presumably wool was stored on the second floor. There was even an inside outhouse. There was a small brick potash shed, which unfortunately crumbled away. There was another large two-story building that was used by the tailor. This building was in total disrepair and had to be taken down. The third building was a garage, which had been a stable at one time. Some older customers told us that they would stable their horses there when they came to Pakenham to go to school. The other benefit of purchasing the store was the beautiful home that went with it. The home was built possibly up to five years later than the original stone structure. The house had a large kitchen and a living room, dining room area. The gift shop in the store was the original dining room and parlor of the house. On the second floor were five bedrooms and there were two on the third floor. One of the bedrooms had been converted to a bathroom. The basement had a large cistern and a stairway to the outside. This photo shows the rear entrance to the house. The back of the building had significant water damage and led us to having the tin roof replaced, the dormers upgraded, and the second level balcony replaced, and we closed up the bath entrances. <laughs> Lovely feature of the house was the side porch and garden. The three season porch was a lovely quiet place to catch your breath and watch the locals go by. You will be able to see in this picture the need for repointing the stone. Once the mortar is compromised, the water runs in and causes more damage. We were fortunate to be able to hire Jerry Keene, a fantastic stone mason, who over our years at the store, he managed to repoint and repair all the walls and chimneys except for the south wall by the driveway. He did this repair under Rodney Bell, so the building has been completely repointed. It was so satisfying each year to see a wall get repaired and to have the store looking its best. The most exciting and last wall to come together was the facade of the store. While the stone was being worked on, 
we ordered a new sign with gold leaf lettering. We felt the store looked all dressed up once Jerry had returned it to its original beauty. We love to restore old buildings. And so here are a few pictures of our efforts at the general store and in the house. There was lots of wallpaper to remove, floors to sand, plumbing and electrical to fix. The windows had internal shutters that opened to block off the light or attempt to keep out the cold, which then folded back into the side panels and disappeared. These two pictures show the living room, dining room renovations. It was large, and while I was taking out the plaster, we found a fireplace hiding behind the refrigerator. We were very pleased with the result. Picture shows the once hidden fireplace all decked out for one of our many Christmas house tours that raised money for local charities. The cherry cabinets were built by John Brathwaite. We bought a reproduction cook stove, now natural gas, and during the ice storm of 1998, we used it to bake bread for the village as we had no hydro. The bulk of the restoration work was done by our new son-in-law, Daryl Villeneuve, with Deanna, our daughter, and an accomplished sander. Not sure how many floors she did, sanded, but she became an expert. Inside the store, we cleaned and reorganized. We stopped selling hardware as there was a home hardware store in town. We put in air conditioning, which was a glorious event, according to Deanna. We had two shelves and wooden holders made for the bulk food. We were given a sideboard from a hotel in Kingston, and we used it to hold all our bulk spices. We scooped large ice cream cones. In front of the cooler, you can see a weigh scale where you could weigh yourself for the price of a dime. That machine paid for itself in a year. It was great fun. Another favorite in the store for customers was scooping candy out of the big jars into tiny brown bags for the trip home. In the store, we like to have fun and make it interesting for customers. And what's more fun than a train? We started by putting in a track all around the top of the store and added an LGB steam train and cars to chug and rumble along the old tins and signs. Part of the track was suspended across the front of the store. It was a favorite with all the children. We had t-shirts and sweatshirts made with a special picture of the bridge and some with the general store. We thought it important to have a souvenir available that was made in Canada. Here is Carol and I all dressed up for Halloween, but we soon learned that only the children were allowed to get dressed up. They really wanted to come trick or treat at the store, but they were afraid when the adults dressed up. So cute. We concentrated efforts on supplying local products. We carry cheese, farm fresh eggs, farm vegetables, fruits, Hudson's corn, pumpkins, planting fat, flats, honey, maple syrup. We had a book signing for Ottawa Valley authors like Mary Cook and Bernie Bedore. One of our local youngsters came every Saturday and played the fiddle for donations. Fern Martin brought flowers to the front of the store to sell. People like to come and see the store for its historical nature, and many love the office with our old barber chair. 
a place for a rest now and then. The office had a walk-in safe that had an enormous brass key that was tucked under our pillow each night. In the gift shop, John and Pat Mellish, a local jewelry products were displayed and sold. We carried local pottery featuring area artists like Kevin Dodds and Ben Babalewski. We rented the back building to Delftry and Paul Zoman, who sold their handcrafted pottery and woodwork. They were especially noted for their unique chess sets. We opened the second floor of the main store to crafters and antiques and artists, and we called it above all else. We became a destination, but we needed to have something irresistible. We found it. Carol was working, but on weekends she would bake bread, muffins, butter tarts, loaves, and cinnamon buns. This is how the bakery started and became the largest part of our business. We invested in ovens and proofers and a walk-in freezer. In 1992, Carol joined me full-time in the store. Our daughter, Deanna, was instrumental in the store and was there most of the time when not in school. She was also a good bookkeeper. Our staff provided friendly service and we were blessed with the best. One thing that made our lives easier was the Packenham Business and Tourism Association. We all worked together to promote Packenham and we had craft tours and Jingle Bell tours. We all did better by working together. During the tours, we dressed the part and it was all hands on deck with lots of volunteers helping out. We found that we could also help out the community. We let our home and non-customer parts of the store be used for house tours for the Almond Hospital, the Heart Institute, St. Andrew's United Church, and many others. We tried very hard to give great service. One of our customers who lived close by required a hand, so we delivered her groceries. She often had us open the jars because of her inability to open them. One customer who had a hard time walking would pull her truck up to the front door, honk, until we noticed her, and then would give us her list to fill and put in the back of her truck. You would call that curb service now in these COVID days. It didn't bother us who came or how they arrived. We were just happy to see all our customers. In the summer months, we were always appreciative of the influx of customers from the local campgrounds and cottages. My mother, Edna, was a favorite with the customers. She loved being in the store and came as often as she could to help out. She also loved garage sales and would scour the neighborhood on Saturday and bring her finds to the store to sell. Carol and she disagreed on the ethics of selling used things. And once Edna bought an, a large green ashtray. She proudly displayed the ashtray in the gift shop. Every time Carol saw it, she put it away in the cupboard. As soon as Edna came back, she would display it again. This battle went on for a long time. <laughs> I had always wanted to go to Carp Fair, so we set up a Pakenham General Store booth there for several years. Our best sellers there were the moccasins and the beautiful apples we got from the orchards in Belleville. Every apple was perfect and polished and was a great treat for fair goers and the carnies 
who were a little tired of hot dogs and fries. You never knew what the weather would be, and one time it was very cold. My mother went off to the dollar store and bought all the gloves she could, and they were our best sellers that weekend. I guess that is being a merchant is all about. Find out what people need, procure it, and sell it to them for a fair price. While we owned the store, we were always researching for tidbits of information about the history of the store. We came across a picture of an old truck belonging to the Scots. By chance, Carol met a man while filling up for gas at the Antrim truck stop. He had a 1929 international truck. Carol knew that I would love that truck and sent the gentleman to meet me at the store. Sure enough, that day I bought the truck and used it in many parades. I would like to thank Carol and Deanna for helping with the slideshow. We enjoyed our time being owners of the Pakenham General Store. Owning a heritage building and business is a privilege and you do the best to maintain and put your mark on both. We are very proud to have been able to restore the building and to ensure the continuation of the traditions of the small town general store. We wish Wanda and Brian every success in their new adventure and hope they will be able to look back on their time as happily as we do. Thank you everyone for listening. Mm. Thank you. Uh, uh, hi. Great. Hello. Did anyone have any questions they wanted to ask? No, but it was a great show. <laughs> it was. <laughs> Here, mm -hmm. I am all. Uh, are we on? You are. Yep. Hello. Hi. <laughs> mm. Got anything to say? Well done, Brian. How did you get that history together, Brian? How did you get the history together? Did you have it digging it? Well, we had it? a lot of it from the yeah. Hayes and the uh, Historical Society. And, and all the names were on the plaque that we had at the time. And then... Uh, Upstairs. And Vernon McGiffin's books are fantastic for history, if you want any of that information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also upstairs, we had oodles of old books and binders and ledgers to get information from. Yeah. So. It was great. Great presentation, guys. It was wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Right, I'm glad you liked it. Mm -hmm. It was fun to do. First time we'd ever done that. Yeah. Are you keeping that tape then and giving it to the Historical Society? Yeah. Oh, good. They have it. Yeah. They have it? Okay. Yeah. Great we idea. put it all on a stick. Pardon? Huh? We put it on a stick. And yeah. so you just oh, plug yeah. it in. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Good idea. This is, this is Wanda Clark speaking, Wanda Rump speaking. And I just wanted to say thank you very much. I enjoyed the presentation uh, immensely. And uh, I know that we will be in touch. That sounds good, Wanda. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carol and Brian. It's brought back a few memories. Uh, oh, Hi, it's so good to see you, Willie. Willie was our first employee. <laughs> oh, I, as I worked for, for Yvonne and Jack for several years before Brian and Carol bought. And uh, uh, it was a wonderful place to work. That's what we said. We had the best employees. <laughs> I, must, I must say, though, that I, I missed... Um, after a while, I missed cutting the, the ham and the bacon and the, and the cold cuts on the uh, hand-operated The old cut. slicer. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, <laughs> when I first started, we were still still selling nails and um, 
all kinds of things by the pound that were behind the counter there. Uh, right. And then Yvonne, Yvonne put in the um, bulk foods and we had a huge table at that time of uh, bulk foods. This past Christmas, I really missed it because in I'm in the States and oh. uh, to buy, I, I'm, I'm actually right now, I live in Cincinnati, Ohio, but I'm in Stony Brook, New York right now for a granddaughter's uh, graduation. But the bulk foods there were wonderful that Yvonne put in and uh, I tried to buy um, candied fruit for Christmas this year and you could not buy it in Cincinnati. I sure did miss that, that we used that. Yeah, good, good. Well, it's good to see you, Willie. Good to see and you. We, we live in Carlton Place. Uh, Do you, uh, Kirsten, Kirsten, my daughter Kirsten lives out at Beckwith um, on a farm about a mile and a half from the, the main road on, I think it's five, and she's on. Mm -hmm. What would be? Well, well, I was going to say, what would be her daughter's name? I'm just curious. I know Beck was reasonably well. <laughs> um, it's Kirsten Jeffrey Johnson. No, I don't. This know that. on Wind Wind. Oh, Wind Something Farm. Uh, I'm trying to think of some of her neighbors that you probably know. Uh, McEwen. You know yeah. McEwen? Well, she lives next, right next to the McEwens. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. On the Wawa Road, Willie, your old house was torn down. I heard. I don't even want to go back. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> Very sad. That was a that was a beautiful um, log cabin structure that had been. It was actually two log cabins built, put together, and it was wonderful. So yes, it's very hard. Yeah. Good to see you. Good to see you. Okay. Anything else anybody wants to know? We did have one question come into the chat. It was April who asked, who was the cute baby in the presentation? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> April spent her first six months on the counter in a little chair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's our granddaughter. Yeah. <laughs> um, but if there are no more questions, I just wanted to give say a big thank you to Brian and Carol for taking the time to prepare this presentation for us. Uh, we really appreciate your insight on local and community history mm -hmm. and the stories that you had to tell about this community icon. And to those in our audience, thank you once again for your support of the North Atlantic Historical Society. 